A new year is a time of new beginnings. The last few weeks, we've been preparing ourselves for the opportunities that lie ahead of us as individual Christians and for us as a faith community. We renewed our covenant to live as God's people. We remembered our baptisms and all that means, reminding us that we have been claimed by God. And we celebrated Epiphany, remembering that the light has come into the darkness and that we are called to share that Christ light this year and beyond. But as Greg Garrett reminds us, beginnings often come bearing both hope and challenge. Matthew tells us a story of new beginnings. John the baptizer came proclaiming that the kingdom is coming, calling for folks to repent, to change, even Herod, and in going toe-to-toe with the powers that be, he finds himself in jail. And later, as you may know, he's beheaded. When Jesus hears the news, he realizes it's time for him to go to Capernaum and begin the work he was sent to do. And so he too begins to proclaim, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And clearly this is a time of hope and challenge. Now when Jesus talks about the kingdom of heaven, he is not talking about how we get to heaven. As N.T. Wright puts it, this is not about our escape from this world into another one, but it's about God's sovereign rule coming on earth as it is in heaven. So when Jesus calls the fishermen to follow me, he's not offering them an escape from the cares of the world. He's actually going to lead them smack into the middle of them. Jesus' call always comes with challenge always beckons us beyond our comfort zones, always asks us to learn and grow and be someone we never knew we could be. We often think of this as a call story. Jesus calls the disciples to become a part of this movement to make the world into what God intended it to be. And yet so often when we talk about call, We've come to only think of it in terms of clergy being called into ordained ministry. What we forget is that every Christian has a call and a call story. Before Colin or I or any minister was ever led to become clergy, we were first called to be followers of Jesus. Every Christian has heard Jesus calling. The calling is seldom to become a professional minister. Instead, it is to be a faithful follower. Follow me. As Elizabeth Milford writes, follow me on a cold morning in January when the warmth of a cozy bed is even more alluring on a Sunday morning into a time of worship, prayer, and study with the community of faith. Follow me. When you see that coworker, classmate, or neighbor who seems to not have anyone to talk to, who is longing for someone to hear his or her story and offer support. Follow me at a dinner party where jokes become increasingly crude and you can't quite bring yourself to laugh at yet another joke that brims with racism or sexism. Follow me to speak out for what is right. Follow me when you see those who are hungry or without shelter, who are like dis- who, or who lack decent clothing, or who are oppressed and without voice. Recognize them as fellow children of God and respond in action. From loading produce at a mobile food pantry to tagging items at a clothes closet to working for real changes in the systems that have failed. Follow me. God's calls are all around us. And here's the thing. God isn't calling us to become someone completely different from who we already are. In David Lose's words, God's call isn't simply to do something, but rather to be something. Be a child of God. Maybe being comes from doing. Maybe being even makes doing possible. I'm not sure. Perhaps the most important reminder we can take away from this story is that 
is that we are called to be children of God. We are valued and honored and loved by God. If we could let that soak in, really soak in, maybe the doing will follow through our work or through our volunteering or through our work for the church, but more than likely it will be through our relationships with others. I firmly believe that the fishermen who said yes that day and followed Jesus came to learn that being fishers of people meant that they would be people who cared about others, who shared what they had, who didn't shy away from the unlovely, who acted a lot like this one who taught and proclaimed the good news and healed those who were hurting and sick. Following Jesus means we enter into a relationship with him and allow him to grow in us. We are called to be in genuine and real relationships with others, as Los continues, bearing each other's burdens, caring for each other, and especially the vulnerable, holding on to each other through thick and thin, always with the hope and promise of God's abundant grace. That call will always involve people, not simply a mission or a ministry or a movement, but actual flesh and blood persons. I can almost hear some of your call stories. You know, I found Jesus in this one who allowed me to confess all the horrible things I'd done. And instead of judging and rejecting me, he offered to walk with me as I vowed to try a different path. They brought Christmas dinner into the most horrible situation my kids and I found ourselves in. They didn't know us, but they cared. She held my hand through the test and the bad news. She sat with me through the treatment. She gave me hope. She gave me her time, her energy. He gave me no money knowing I could never repay it. They came and built a wheelchair ramp so that I could escape from my home in the dark place in which I was existing. He showed me grace and gave me a second, third, and fourth chance. She was light. You know, in Jesus, light has dawned as the prophet Isaiah foretold. It is our calling as followers of Jesus to be light. Make no mistake, that call is always intrusive and disruptive. Following Jesus is not easy. He will take us places we do not want to go. He will grow us in ways we don't want to grow. He will ask of us things we could never imagine doing. You may recall the poem by Amanda Gorman. She read at President Biden's inauguration in January of 2021. It begins, when day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never-ending shade? The lost we carry, a sea we must wade. We braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace, and the norms and notions of what just is isn't always justice. And yet the dawn is ours before we know it. Then the last line can be called tied to the call to discipleship. For there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. May we be the ones who answer the call to be light in the darkness, the call to follow Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen.